Now so far so we've been seeing just a single for loop and but mostly uh, many a times you the purpose that you're using for loop it requires the use of a multiple for loops there's a loop a for loop inside another for loop so let's see what we need to take care of while writing a multiple for loop and how a multiple for loop works now let's see we have a for loop for i counter for i let's say i less than 5 plus plus i and then we have a nested for loop inside this that goes by a variable say j say again 5 and plus plus j so you got a for loop within another for loop so the first basic thing we need to take care of is the scope of the variable now in case I need to print i here now this is perfectly fine because the scope of i it lies from this to this so anywhere within this range you can print i but what if I print j here now you can see it's pointing out to some error now the error is that it says that j cannot be resolved to a variable now why such an error is coming this is because we've been using j beyond the scope of where exactly j is visible so j is only visible within the scope of this uh, inner loop we've been using this in the outer loop so this is a very common mistake we usually make or we fail to uh, figure out that this is the mistake that's there so you need to see that the scope of the variable is perfect before you uh, start coding with this the outer variable has a scope of this whereas the inner loop has a scope of this so this is what we need to primarily see when you uh, start writing with multiple for loops now let's see what exactly is the flow of this multiple for loop now the flow starts with the outer loop which says int i is equal to 0. Let's start this with 1. Okay. Now let's see what exactly is the flow of a multiple for loop. How how the flow uh, goes through in a multiple for loop. Now let's start this loop with i equal to 1. Now the initial check i less than 5 is perfectly fine. So we come down to the inner for loop. Now for every value of i, the entire j loop will run. So j will run from 0 till j is less than 5 or we can say when j is equal to 5 the loop uh, the inner loop it terminates and then it again increments i by 1 it again goes through the check for i which is i less than 5 2 less than 5 perfectly fine again and then again the entire iteration for the j loop it works and so on for every i then again the entire j loop it works and then again it comes down to the outer loop so in case I put down something here now in case I put on something in the outer part now this will run after every complete iteration of the inner for loop so when i is equal to 1 j runs through 0 to 4 and then you will get a print which is this and then it will again start working with i equal to 2 so what we will do here is let's print i yeah. so i and then let's put some tab here and then we have this let's see what the output is here so there we go. Now for i is equal to 1, j runs through j equal to 0, j equal to 1, j equal to 2, j equal to 3, j equal to 4. So it's 5 iterations for every value of i. So you got 5 times i equal to 1 printed and then it prints this is the outside the inner loop and then it again does the same for i equal to 2 and then it goes for i equal to 3, i equal to 4 and then finally the entire loop structure it closes so this is how this works now let's see if uh, get something uh, more meaningful let's try to get uh, write a program that gives you an output which is something like this let's try and get how we get to this now since in this as you can see the outer loop it controls the rows the inner for loop it controls the columns so as we let's see if we get 5 for this so let's make this less than 6 and j now j is not a stagnant it depends upon the row so for the first row only one value the second row is two values third row three values so this we can 
connect to the value of i. So first term i is 1, so we need only one iteration and we've got one iteration. Second time i goes to 2, so we got j is equal to 0, j equal to 1, so we got two iterations. So the only thing we need here is just get this message off and rest all is done. So let's see how this works. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I just made a small mess of it. We don't need a print ln here. So there we have a very simple use of a multiple for loop to print such a thing. Now in case you need this to be an incrementing value, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So what we can do is we take a variable here, say count, start this from 1, print count here, increment this, it is done. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this. So as you can see what exactly is a for loop when you use it as a, a number of for loops. You can have any any nesting of for loops. You could have another for loop within this for loop. So the same scope applies to whatever level of nesting you have and the behavior again or the flow again follows the same rule. You get one value of outer loop then the entire iteration of the inner loop then again the outer variable increments it goes through the check and then again the complete iteration of the inner loop. So this is how you work with multiple for loops in Java.